Hello, 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 everyone. Hi. Happy Friday, y'all. What's up? Hey, hello. hey, hey. Third February Live of February 2024. We see people in the chat already. We got Rochelle Parker and Ren in the chat. Hello. If you are watching or tuning in with us, please. We're doing roll call as always. So tune in and tell us where you're watching from. And we can shout you out during this live. So we're back with another week of recipes, great discussion, and also um, a cooking demo. So if you're hearing background noise, that's my cooktop. It will be on during the demo, but once it's over, we'll get some better sound quality. But uh, to start it off, I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce myself again. We can all let everyone know, everyone know where we're from. So my name is Jessica, and I am the Director of Program Innovation at Afro Vegan Society. I've been vegan since February 2016, and my favorite vegan food is... Uh, Alfredo today. <laughs> Catch you, Alfredo. Anyone else want to let people know? What's going on, y'all? I'm Ray. As I said, I am the operations director of Afro Vegan Society and a favorite vegan food of mine. That's hard, man. That's hard. Um, I don't know. It's so many. I don't know. One of my favorite things to snack on is like avocado. So I'll go with that. I'll go. I'm Brenda Sanders. I am the founder and executive director of Afro Vegan Society. And right now, I'm on a pretty limited diet. So my favorite food is blueberries. Yum. My name is Danny, and I am the director of marketing and social media. And my favorite vegan food is vegan pizza. Uh -huh. Nice. Yes, yeah, so we are rolling in. We see the comments rolling in. Um, can, does somebody want to read the roll call of where we've got people tuning in from today? Yeah, yeah. We've got uh, Florence, South Carolina representing, Atlanta, Georgia, LA. We have Maryland checking in, Southeast Texas in the house. All right. Chicago, South Suburbs. Okay. Prep y'all set. Let us know where you're checking in from and spending time with us this today. Michigan, Charlotte. Wow. Everywhere. San Diego. Nice. Awesome. So, yes, as you continue to tune in, let us know where you're watching from. But we also have another call to action for you because for the third week, we have another amazing giveaway for y'all. So, I'm going to share the graphic on the screen real quick. So, once again, every single week we are giving away a new vegan appliance for you to up your game in your vegan kitchen with all the vegan dishes you'll be making. And for week three, we are giving away an air fryer. So I personally love my air fryer. I cook everything, any and everything in there. So um, if you want a chance to win the air fryer this week, go ahead and comment your favorite vegan food in the chat as well. And we will randomly be selecting a winner who we will announce at the conclusion of today's live. But that's not all of the amazing things we have going on for February this month. We also have a sale going on for some of our merch. Ray, do you want to tell people about that sale? Yes, y'all. We have some awesome things going in our merch section. So make sure that you check out our website, www.afroveganSociety.org. As soon as you go to the page, whether you're mobile or on your laptop or computer, you'll see the banner that says merch. And we are having a sale, y'all. So jump on it. It's all month long. 20% off. Just use the code VEGUARY and you can get some of our things we offer like stickers. We have mugs. We have these awesome tote bags. We have these shirts, Afro Vegan Society shirts. Now I have one of our vintage blues, but we have our black and white, which looks awesome. To me, I love the black and white one a lot better. So uh, we have shirts, we have like the little water carriers, things like that. So make sure you check it out. Get some of your merch, get it for your friends, get it for yourself. Um, yeah, make sure you take advantage. And again, it's all month long, 20% off, code February. When you go to the website, you'll see the banner. Or you can go check out our merch by going, clicking on the shop link that's at the top of the page. And while you're there checking out our awesome 
website, make sure you go to the resources section, everybody. Last week, we mentioned we had our dairy-free guide that was there. So you can click that to download it. We have a couple things going on that are so useful. So please don't just visit the site to get the merch. Make sure you take advantage of all the resources, excuse me, free resources that we have available on our site for you to download. And please, please, please tell a friend, forward it to a friend, have them check out our website for yourselves. Awesome. We also have another exclusive thing going on this month, and that is the opportunity to view a very important film. So Brenda, do you want to tell us about the film viewing we have going on this month? Yes, absolutely. So if you haven't seen the film that we are promoting this month, it is called They're Trying to Kill Us. Uh, you know, sound off if you have seen the film. Um, because it is an amazing film. Uh, it is very powerful. I just so happen to be featured in it, but you know, it, like it would still be powerful even without me, maybe not quite as powerful, but it would still be an amazing film. Um, it's, I mean, like groundbreaking information. It's just telling the real truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, which, you know, is rare <laughs> to see. Um, and it is showing for free only for the month of February for Black History Month. So make sure to go over there and check that out. Tell friends, tell family. This is definitely one that everybody wants to see. They're trying to kill us.com is where you can go over and watch it. So make sure to do that if you haven't already. Wonderful. And yes, Danny, over on social media, you've actually been doing live streams with people who have been featured in the film. So can you tell us about the lives that have happened so far? Absolutely. The first one that we did, we kicked off with our very own Brenda Sanders. And so we talked about, okay. And we talked with Dr. Ruby Lathan last Wednesday. We have John Badass Vegan coming up in two weeks. And we every week we're just tapping in with some people that have been featured in the film. So we can get just a little bit more in depth with some behind the scenes information or just go more in and people can ask questions. So that uh, has been really amazing. And I feel like those that have seen it and they, they're tapping into the lives, then they're really able to like get more questions answered. And then those have, who haven't seen it, they're now inspired to, to see it um, and even gather with their family and friends to show it to them. Awesome. So for today's discussion, our theme of this live is better than beef. And so we'll be talking about the challenges of navigating a meat eating world as a vegan and also some of our tips to make it more seamless. And I'm actually going to, before we get into the discussion, share a really delicious beefless recipe. So I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger and we can show you how to make a delicious vegan chopped cheese sandwich. So this recipe is super duper simple and it is live on the Afro Vegan Society website now. So if you want to make it after this live concludes or sometime this weekend, you'll be able to do that seamlessly. So you only need a few ingredients. Um, chopped cheese is like a popular uh, dish at bodegas in New York City. And it's basically like ground up hamburger meat chopped up with onions and sauteed with cheese and then served on like a hoagie bun or a roll. And so I wanted to show you how to make this using affordable ingredients. Now, the simplest way to do this would just to be to buy some sort of beefless ground or crumble, whichever one you prefer that's vegan, um, and just use that and use a very similar preparation style. But I wanted to show you using some really affordable ingredients. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do it with brown lentils and mushrooms. So for today's recipe, I'm using um, mushrooms that are actually canned. I wanted to do this because they're super affordable. Um, these were like a dollar a can from Aldi for me. Um, they're really, really affordable. Uh, they don't go bad in the fridge. They're like shelf stable, but also I like them because when you're cooking with mushrooms, they have a lot of moisture in them. And so it takes quite a while to cook that moisture out. And so when you're using something like canned mushrooms or even frozen mushrooms, they're either like flash steamed or boiled or something. So a lot of that water is already drawn out. So it makes the cooking process that much shorter. So um, before we get started, I'm going to start sauteing my onions because this is going to go super fast. So I have a pan here heating over medium heat that is quite hot. I'm going to be safe. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, put that aside. And I'm just going to take about 
two tablespoons of oil and drizzle that in the pan. And then I have half of a large yellow onion that I've sliced up and I'm just gonna put that in the pan and let those start melting. Okay? And then we're just gonna let the lid go back on. We want those to start sweating and caramelizing and all those good things. So while that's getting going, I'm gonna show you how to prepare these lentils. So here we have a cup and a half of boiled green lentils, no salt, anything, just plain. And I'm gonna put them in a food processor. Now you can use an electric food processor if you like, but um, I like this manual one just because it's easier to clean. And I have a lot of great appliances, but I find myself not using them if they take more work to clean. So I love this just because you can have the convenience of a food processor, but without having to plug stuff in. But you don't need a food processor for this. So if you wanna just mash the lentils up with like a potato masher or something, you can do that. And then you can just chop up the mushrooms with a knife. But we're adding in our lentils. And this is two six ounce cans of mushrooms. They have been drained and rinsed. And I squeezed them out with a towel just to get as much moisture out as I could. And now I'm gonna add those in as well. All right. So we've got both of those in our food processor. Then I'm gonna go in with about a tablespoon of oil. Any vegetable oil you like. I'm using avocado oil today. And then we're going to go in with about a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce. So this is going to add like salt to it, but it's also going to add some nice dark color and some like umami, like meaty flavors. So put all that straight in. Alrighty. And then I'm just going to pull the cord. It's kind of like a lawnmower a little bit. So I'm just pulling the cord. And probably do about 10 full times. You don't want it to get too mushy. You still want some texture to be intact, but you don't want it to be too, too chunky. Okay. So our mushrooms and lentils have been chopped up. So we have that texture here now. And that's really all you need to do. So now we're going to take our mushrooms and lentils, chop mushrooms and lentils and put it on a lined baking sheet and just spread it into an even layer. Now, this step is one that I tried to skip. Honestly, initially, when I first uh, tested this recipe, I put it straight into the soft tape pan, but it had a lot of moisture in it and it makes the texture more mushy and you want it to have a nicer chew to it. So drying it out is really essential. Mm. So just scraping this all onto our pan here. All right. And so you spread that into a nice even layer and then you put this into a 400 degree preheated oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And so we just wanna cook this so it becomes dry and almost crispy looking on the surface. And that's how you know it's dehydrated enough that you're gonna get a nice chewy texture. So I'm gonna clean up my space just a bit and show you through the magic of recipe prep what it looks like when it's done baking. So this is before and this is after. So that looks like a nice crumbled brown beef, right? But it's just mushrooms and lentils. Lentils are super affordable, a great source of protein. The mushrooms add a nice chew as well. But yeah, that's all it takes. So our onions have quieted down quite a bit. And I love sauteing like this lid on because the steam gets trapped and everything gets softened up a lot faster. So I have our onions going and I'm just going to scrape our baked lentil and mushroom crumble into our pan. Okay. Set all of this aside. And so this is what it looks like in our pan. I'm just going to mix it up. Now it is a little bit dry, but we can always rehydrate. So I'm just going to add in a, a couple slices of water, maybe like a tablespoon or so, just to help it to clump back together so you get that nice crumbly texture. 
And if you don't want to have to like re-add water, you can bake it for a shorter time, like 15 minutes instead. But I'd rather get it out drier and then rehydrate as opposed to like having it end up being mushy. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to add a little bit more. Like I said, I just want everything to clump together. Okay, and this is what it's looking like once again. We've got our ground lentils and mushrooms here, all crumbled up with our sauteed onions. Mm. And now it wouldn't be chopped cheese without cheese. So I just have some shredded cheddar here. And I'm going to use a good amount. We want this nice and cheesy, maybe like a third cup, quarter cup. And this is going to make like two to three sandwiches, depending on how much of the filling you want in your sandwich. So we've got our vegan cheese on top, and I'm just going to cover it up with the lid again. Once again, the steam is going to help that vegan cheese to melt down and get everything well incorporated. And while that's melting down, I'm going to start assembling the sandwich. Like, it's really that simple. So I have my blood. In the recipe, uh, in the photo on the uh, website, I use hoagie buns. Those are awesome, really soft and delicious. This is like a gluten free hamburger bun that I found, so I'm using that today. And we're just going to go in with two condiments, and that is vegan mayo and ketchup. And I'm just going to spread the mayo and the ketchup on both sides of the bun. And just while you're dressing your sandwich, I wanted to let the audience know if you're thinking about the nutritional value, you know, um, looking at if you measure, I guess, about the serving of what she has, if that was ground beef, you're probably looking at about maybe 16 grams of protein. Well, looking at Jess's dish, if you have the lentils and the mushrooms, you're looking at about 18 or 19 grams of protein, not to mention you're going to have your B vitamins, your selenium, your fiber, whole host of great nutritional value that comes from what she's doing versus the cholesterol and all the bad stuff that will come as if you use ground beef. So your nutritional value is there, but most importantly, your protein content is there for those that are worried about it. Thank you for that point. So I un I plugged my cooktop because I heard people were having sound problems. So my apologies for that, but we got the residual heat in here. So hopefully I'm coming in loud and clear now so we can see the finale of this sandwich. But that's a great point because that's one of the biggest questions that people are always asking vegans is where are you getting your protein from? Are you getting enough protein? And not only are you getting substantial protein by replacing beef in this dish, but also it's so much more affordable. Like the amount of beefless crumble I just made, this is like pennies compared to what it would cost to make this much ground beef. So it takes a little bit longer, but not much. And the nutritional benefits, the uh, benefits for your wallet are really, really high. So I've got that ketchup and mayo on my bun. And now I am going to, um, let's see, what should I do on my order? Okay, actually we can start with the chopped cheese filling. So that cheese melted just that fast. Um, honestly, you could use any vegan cheese you like. That was Daya I used. I tried Wegmans brand. Um, vegan cheese has come a long way. Most of them melt pretty well and they add a really nice texture. So we're just spooning that on nicely. It's kind of messy, but I mean, you know, when you get this from like the bodega, they wrap it up in all that parchment paper and foil anyway. So it's going to be a little bit messier at home anyways. And I like a messy sandwich. That's how you know it's good usually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got plenty of cheese in that crumble in here. And then I'm just going to top it off with a couple tomatoes. And some of that shredded lettuce. All right, and it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. We've got our vegan chopped cheese sandwich, nice and messy, very tasty though. And the recipe is in the chat. So if you want to try it out, definitely visit the link on the Afro Vegan Society website. It comes together so quick, super satisfying, and it smells amazing in here. It's crazy how when those lentils and mushrooms cook with that little bit of soy sauce, the flavor really, really develops. You're going to be surprised when you taste it, how good it is. So I hope y'all enjoyed this demo. Let's bring it back to the AVS team so we can get talking about navigating being a vegan in a meat-eating world. 
Jess, that looks so delicious. Yes. Oh my yes. goodness. And then I, what I love about that lentil and mushroom mixture, I don't know if you've done that technique and use it in other dishes, but that seems like a great replacement even for making like spaghetti or other things that you would want to replace beef, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's yeah. really easy too because if you have a larger baking pan, you can make a way bigger batch of this and then just like have it in the fridge or in the freezer so you can use it for like tacos, like Danny said, for spaghetti or pasta, like so many different ways you can make this beefless crumble at home, naturally low in fat, naturally cholesterol free. So delicious or delicious, high in fiber and pretty convenient with just a little bit of prep. Yeah. Oh, and someone wants to, Karen wants to know, can I sub the soy sauce with meat? So absolutely. Uh, you can use coconut aminos, soy aminos. You can just use sea salt. You can use, um, you know, like a vegan beef bouillon cube. Mm -hmm. Any of those. Well, you could even use something like, um, I ha I've started trying this out a little bit, but I'm not that familiar with like a Vegemite. Or have y'all heard of Vegemite? It's like yeah. an Australian yeasty paste thing. Like you can use those type of things too to get those like rich meaty flavors in your plants. Okay, wonderful. Okay, we have a comment here. All right, Jess, with the with the good, good, good advice. So we have Crystal Morris checking in to say that she used the strategy that you mentioned last week about asking the chef to make a special vegan dish. And she went to Ruth Chris for Valentine's Day and the chef made her a vegan broccoli steak with onions. Ooh, that sounds really good. Okay. I'm glad that works. I need to try that at more restaurants because honestly, I feel like as vegans, we're so used to like making do or like, oh, I'm going to navigate very strategically that we forget like if we just you know with a little bit of prep, you can probably get a really nice result. So I'm glad that worked. And I need to try that out at Ruth Chris myself. Yeah. All right. So today's topic of discussion is navigating being a vegan in a meat eating world. And we all thought about this a little bit in advance just to talk about, you know, like what are some challenges that we face as vegans in these scenarios and then whatever our tips. So I think we should go each go around and talk about what our challenge was and then what our tip is. Cause I feel like the tips and the challenges kind of go hand in hand a little bit. So with that said, Ray, do you want to get us started with talking about um, a challenge you've noticed navigating a meat eating world? Sure, sure. Okay. So for me, um, and you know, you can, some people may call it picky, but for me, especially being concerned with, you know, a lot of places, uh, they don't necessarily care about how they prepare their foods. That's just in general. Okay. Um, so, you know, depending on where you are, um, a main concern can be cross-contamination. Uh, you know, many kitchens, they don't, give this concept enough thought. Uh, some of them do it intentionally and some don't. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to customers who, you know, prefer like vegan dishes, uh, plant-based friendly dishes, um, you know, some of us don't want fries that are cooked in the same grease as say chicken wings. Um, you know, I also wouldn't like a burger, like if I get like a black bean burger or a veggie burger, um, if it's on the grill and it's sitting right next to a hamburger. So then I have like all that blood being smashed out of the burger and it's seeping over to where my veggie burger or my black bean burger is. Um, you know, it's only going to saturate my burger, um, you know, so I don't necessarily want that, you know, and that's some stuff like that matters to some people. But also, too, a lot of places do these type of things with cross-contamination, especially with like grease and things like that, and they're not supposed to. Um, even just by general like food-based standards, san like sanitation-wise, they're not supposed to do those type of things anyway. So it makes it it helps to ask um, ahead of time, and um, that is a major concern, um, at least for me um, finding out. So I'm always asking about that. So yeah, that's my concern. I feel can like I, we. I, oh, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to say something real quick. <laughs> because the longer you've been eating plant based food exclusively, the more likely you will actually have a reaction to eating um, <clears throat> animal products. And so, like, literally, if I, you know, go somewhere and I ask for a vegan dish, and say, for instance, like um, with certain dishes, it just comes with um, egg, right? Um, either egg noodles or like eggs are cooked into the dish. Well, 
if I eat eggs at this point, something with egg in it, I can tell because I get immediately get a migraine. Um, I was always extremely like sensitive to cow's milk, even as a baby. So like, I can always tell if something has dairy in it because I will immediately be in pain. So mm. that's one of the things, uh, Ray, you were saying that people say that you're picky um, and it can be looked at that way, um, especially if people feel feel like frustrated or whatever. Oh, the vegan. But mm. it can become a serious issue for people who have been eating plant based for like a very long time. Um like me, I, I've spent 25 years. Um, and so we really do need to ask these questions um, to make sure that we won't walk away from a, an experience actually sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. I was, I was just going to say, like, I feel like it's something we've all encountered at some point, either because also like you talk to somebody at the restaurant and you're like, I'm vegan. And they were like, oh, we have gluten-free options. And it's like, no, no, no. Or like, you know what I mean? So even just like a misunderstanding yeah. or a lack of like, you know, care about certain terminology is like, you have to almost, you have to talk like very detailed and just like, well, don't be condescending. It's like, I'm not trying to be, I'm just trying to make sure like we're on the same page. You know what right. I mean? Cause I would hate for it to be like an unnecessary like mishap. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's something you have to be vigilant about no, no matter how long you're vegan, honestly, like, um, yeah, I, I don't think it really goes away. I feel like there's more and more public knowledge about it, but I also think that there is a slight in increase in like criticism by people who are like, oh, you're a vegan. I'm going to like, I'm a carnist. Like, were y'all carnist before the word vegan existed? Like, it was just very reactive. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, I feel like it's, it's something you always have to be aware of no matter what. I think you mean carnivore. Carnist is something completely different. We can talk about that off camera. <laughs> well, I, okay. I've seen people use it. I know, but I've seen people use it interchangeably. That's how they're describing themselves too. So that just speaks to. I don't. I don't think they should do. That. <laughs> it can all be very confusing. Like there's so many yeah. new words, new phrase, you know, new phrases, new ways of seeing the world. So yeah, don't call yourself a carnist ever. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Yeah, I would love to share my challenge because uh, it kind of goes along with what we're talking about. But when you go to a non-vegan restaurant and you're trying to find vegan options and you say, like, I want a vegan option, sometimes people don't really understand what it means to be vegan. They might just think, like, the whole thing, like meat and but don't realize that like if I wanted to order a burger and you butter the bread that then now that bread and burger is not vegan anymore right. or that you know the beans maybe were cooked in a uh, chicken broth or you know so so some there's like a level of education that needs to happen so that people really understand what it means to be vegan now I I don't know I see when I go I usually lie and say you know what you know, promoting lying, but I'm just saying, I'll say like, I'm allergic because yeah. the allergy allergic that mm -hmm. like th those words set off this like red light, like, Oh my God. Okay. We have to make sure that we don't serve them anything that to cause an allergic reaction. So that's how I navigate that. Also, I also ask enough questions. I'm like, okay, it's, is there egg in there? Is there egg in the pasta? Do you butter the bread? Do you um, cook this in, veg in veggie broth or is it in chicken broth or other type of broth and um, or bone broth or whatever? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then um, what else do I do? So yeah, so asking the right questions and then also just making sure that I'm just doing the research if it be online, looking and seeing what blogs are saying just to ensure that I do get a meal that is fully vegan. Uh, Jess, you wanna go next? You want me to go next? I can go. Um, okay. My challenge that, I mean, it's not the only challenge, but I think a, a challenge I can bring to the table that I've dealt with more than I like to admit, not frequently, but certainly more than I like to admit is, is error on my part. So being somewhere and assuming something is vegan, like beans and rice or broccoli or um, 
you know, very simple foods, like why would there be, why would there be something in that? Especially also like if the, if the menu or the ingredients don't outright list like buttered broccoli, I know there's butter on that broccoli, but if you just say steamed broccoli, I'm going to be like, oh, and then I get it and I'm tasting like that tastes wrong, you know? So for me, that's been a challenge for me is taking for granted that very simple, basic foods that I assume are vegan are vegan. That's error on my part because once again, like honestly, you can get a little bit fatigued sometimes from doing all the double, triple checking, make sure you're communicating effectively, you know? And so I fall in like, I fall in at the hands of that, like, uh, that's on me. I should have asked, you know? Um, and so staying alert, staying diligent, but also making my life simpler by mostly eating at home whenever I can makes it easier too, because I'm like, I'd rather cook my own food than have long conversations with people about like whether or not there's like chicken broth in this white rice. You know what I mean? Like, and people like to do stuff now like bone broth in the rice because, oh, it's hypoglycemic or, you know what I mean? There are all these different nutrition and food fads going on. And so they're finding new ways to incorporate new animal-based products into seemingly plant-based foods. And it's like, well, why? But the question isn't why. I just need to be more diligent about asking now what exactly is in here as opposed to focusing on why they're doing what they're doing. I have to focus on like, am I asking the right questions to stay in alignment with my own values? Yes, yes, yes. I, I feel like um, all of us kind of have some of the same types of concerns and probably most people who've transitioned to um, plant-based eating, but, you know, still have to be out here in these streets eating food. Um you know, if you're not somebody who just like, you know, like <clears throat> Danny, who just like cooks every night and is just like making this amazing, like healthy food. I'm talking about you, Danny. I don't know if you heard me, but, um, you know, if you're not, you know, doing that every night and, you know, or you've gotten invited out, you know, by with friends or something like that or at a family event, um, you know, you can be perceived as being difficult, as was already um, expressed in these, um, you know, these answers. It's just like you can be seen as difficult or, you know, like just, I don't know, like uppity. I don't know, like just just like too much, like just just you doing too much. Um, but I think the more people get into um, just eating a particular way and are actually happy with the way that they're eating because it makes, you know, they feel great. They have the energy, you know, it's helping with different conditions. Um, they feel good about their choices based off of, you know, whatever belief systems they have. And they can feel good that like, oh, I'm not supporting the animal agriculture industry that's like decimating the environment or whatever your reasons are for wanting to get into plant-based eating you got to be kind of okay with looking out for yourself, right? Because there may not be anybody else looking out for you. And so you got to be, get comfortable with asking those questions. And at first it may not be comfortable. At first it's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't want to speak up. I wasn't like that. Like I, that is not my personality. Like I'm finna speak up. I've been speaking up since I was five years old. But for folks who are just like, I don't want to be a problem. I don't want to speak up. You know, like I don't want to be like the vegan and stuff like that. Um, you know, just getting comfortable with looking out for your health, looking out for um, like your experience, you know, because again, being somebody who will actually like have a negative experience if I'm eating animal products, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta look out and, and make sure that you're having the experience that you're hoping to have. But again, like Jess was saying, you know, in a kind way, you know, not uh, being rude or, or snooty or anything like that, but just being very sincere, you know, um, Crystal was saying that, you know, she actually like tried the, the tactic of asking the chef. And again, the chef was like happy to do it, you know? So, so like just moving past that, um, anxiety about looking out for yourself in those situations. Yeah. Um, we have a few comments for people sharing their experiences. So I want to just share those on screen. So we have here the comment, being vegan will sure boost your social skills. It's true. It's true. Like if you try to keep things minimal, 
uh, you have to become an effective communicator uh, in order to like advocate for yourself in those settings. So that's so true. Um, Karen says, yeah, suggest, like Danny said, suggest you're under doctor's orders due to a medical condition to uh, hopefully make sure that you'll get like the right food that's not cross-contaminated. Crystal shares that um, she gets mean looks sometimes at Mexican restaurants if, when asking if there's lard in the beans. And it's common for some places to still use lard. That's so true. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really true. I'm lucky that I have like Latin American restaurants near me, like my neighborhood. There are lots of vegan friendly options. So like they'll even have vegan sections on the menu, even if it's not a vegan restaurant. So like they have kind of like a clear understanding. And I always double check like the first couple times, but they'll like, you know, all these items on the menu are vegan friendly. And then this has the vegan entree. So yeah, having to do that constantly is like, you know, why why do I have to worry about there's lard in the beans, you know? Yeah, I had a um, similar. Oh, I'm sorry. I had, I had a, I have had similar experiences, um, going to like uh different cultural restaurants or different different ethnic restaurants. Um, I have more than once had an experience at a, a Indian restaurant where I'm like trying to express like, and no dairy, please. Um, and then you know I'll ask about a particular particular dish, and they're like, oh, you know, it has ghee, and I'm like, well, I can't eat dairy, and then they're like, well, it's not dairy, it's ghee. Um, and so it's just like, a it's like a, um, miscommunication that's happening. So if you have like a serious sensitivity to dairy products, check out our dairy free living guide, because there's actually a list of words, um, that are commonly used in, you know, the food industry that you may not know, like ghee is dairy, but some people might actually make a distinction between, oh, it's not dairy, it's ghee, which is clarified butter. Um, and so, you know, just start to educate yourself, look at the resources that we have available, because that is that is what we do. Like we educate people, help uh, to navigate or help people to navigate through this world of plant based eating. Yes. And Dietrich says, I just usually ask to speak to the chef and ask them if they can prepare vegan dishes and how would they prepare it? That way, everybody is on the same page. And I don't care if other folks don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's sure. real. That's real. I mean, that's the whole thing. Like choosing to be vegan is very much not the status quo, right? Like you are stepping away from the standard American way of doing things, not just in your diet, but in your lifestyle across the board. So that takes a certain amount of bravery, even if you don't feel brave yet, like you get to practice that once again, because you're advocating for yourself um, to make sure that your needs are met and that you're in alignment with your values. So that's a great point. Yeah, for sure. And at the end of the day, I mean, you're a paying customer, you know, I'm still putting my money into this. And, you know, if someone has an allergy to something, they'll make the extra accommodation because, you know, they don't want to, I guess, get sued, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, you deserve the same respect as a paying customer. Yeah. I've, I've also had experience one time at a family event where someone, a very well-intentioned loved one, um, she was known for making mac and cheese. And so she was like, Jessica, I made the mac and cheese so you can eat it this year. And I was like, oh, really? What'd you do? And she got, she used lactate milk and she bought organic cheese. Mm. And I was like, I am sorry you made that expensive mac and cheese. Like that was like a $70 macaroni and cheese you made. But I, and I was like, I can't eat it still. I was like, it means no animal products. And so also like, I feel like some people do have real pressure, like with family and food, you know, like food is an expression of love. And so letting people know, like, no, I don't eat that. You know what I mean? Um, I've heard lots of stories about like vegan people going to their grandma's house and she's like, you're vegan. I made you fish. I made you lamb. You don't yeah. eat meat, right? And it's just like, thank you, grandma, but nothing. You know what I mean? And so it's just like having to constantly like just be diligent with having those conversations over and over again. And understanding some people won't grasp it ever, you know what I mean? But still being able to be like, this is, this is how I'm doing it. And then coming up with your strategy for navigating those scenarios. Mm -hmm. And that Absolutely. goes along with what Michelle Taylor Green said, many confuse vegan with vegetarian. We really need to clarify when eating out. Um, I see that actually so much. <laughs> and it's interesting because vegetarian used to actually income like mean vegan. And I don't know what the, at least in, in the black community, like during the sixties, um, when mm -hmm. there was this big move towards, um, you know, eating healthier as a revolutionary act, 
um, and I'm actually writing about that in my book right now. Um, it was, they would call it pure vegetarian, um, especially in a lot of like Caribbean food and stuff like that. They would say, you know, for Ital food, it would be like pure vegetarian, um, mm -hmm. which turned into like vegetarian. And then, you know, all this like kind of like, okay, well, vegetarian can also be dairy and it can also be eggs. And so there was this um, shift that happened that a lot of folks never really decided to, you know, like um, shift over to, they're just like, it's vegetarian. Like vegetable is right in the name. It's not like eggitarian. It's not like, pesky, you know, it's, it's not like milkitary. It's vegetarian. It is made from vegetables. Um, but now there's so much more clarity and now it's just like the word that's being used is plant-based right which is also getting a little tricky because now the the animal agriculture industries have found a loophole and so and i don't mean to like concern anybody because i don't really i think that we're gonna get the hang of it and we'll be able to like you know point out and be able to see like oh they trying to trick us um but so they designated that plant-based um could also it could like have up to like six percent animal products or something like that um and so now it's um you know something that we just need to look at and make sure that like if people are trying to push that kind of thing just look at the ingredients like if you're shopping in the groceries because that's where it's happening you know, mm -hmm. like these animal agriculture industries, they're seeing that they're losing ground. Like mm -hmm. people are being more interested in their health. Um, people are are like looking at the foods that they're eating and being like, oh, maybe I shouldn't eat this. And so it's kind of like they're like, you know, they need they need to find ways to still be able to put their products into um, our foods. The same kind of thing with dairy. If it says uh, non dairy versus dairy free. Right. So now they're able to sneak a little bit of milk into, you know, um, non-dairy products as opposed to dairy free. Right. So it's just it's it's like, again, it's not something to be like stressed about. I don't want anybody to be like at the grocery store pouring sweat, trying to figure out, like, is it going to have meat, you know, milk in it or is it is it plant based? You know, um, but just look, just look and see and you'll start to see like some patterns where it's like, oh, they trying to be slick you know, and that kind of thing. And it, and after a while, it'll just become second nature. I think that's a great point you, you, you brought up too about like navigating the grocery store because there's definitely, I can't remember exactly which brand it was, but there was a brand that made vegetarian food and they had temporarily removed all the eggs from their products. And then like a few years ago, they added them back in. So like if you're in a corn? habit of buying, I think so, corn? yeah, corn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there might be brands that you might be used to being vegan and then they switch it up and they don't necessarily announce it like you have to be reading the um, the labels to know that something changed. And then I've also almost bought products before because it was like plant, plant pure chicken nuggets mm -hmm. and the branding looked very much like it was vegan. But then you look at it and it's like, oh, this is eco friendly chicken. It's half chicken and it's half mushrooms and oats or something like that. So they're basically stretching it. They're charging mm -hmm. you more to add right. cheaper products right. and market right. it as though it's somehow better than it is. And then you look at it and it's Tyson's, you know what I mean? But they have the leaves on it. They'll put some bees in there somewhere. It just won't say vegan, but it's very, very tricky stuff that they're doing to try to get people like to stay caught up in their in their corporate triangle you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um so yeah you do have to really be diligent in those worship styles for real yeah i've gotten caught up i bought some cookies I and I, they said they were dairy free so i figured they had eggs in them and i was like oh and i bought them and everything brought them home and i was getting ready to eat them and i'm like let's check you know you just like something made me think about that I was just so mad, not only because I had wasted the money, but I, I wanted some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't lie, though. <laughs> it was they didn't lie. <laughs> exactly. They didn't lie. But in my mind, I was just like, I jumped on. I'm like, ooh, dairy free. So oh, no. I know there's not going to be meat. In, I figured there wouldn't be any meat in um in the cookies. But uh -oh. but yeah, there was definitely eggs. So oh, that was a sad yeah. day. <laughs> That's something I've come across as a gluten-free. I buy a lot of gluten-free products because me and wheat don't get along. And so you'll be buying stuff. And some of them don't have eggs. And it'll be the same brand. So like the hot dog buns won't have yep. eggs. But mm -hmm. then the hoagie buns will have eggs. And it's just like, why are y'all doing that? It's literally the same brand of food. 
Yeah. Why is that in there? Somebody also brought up honey. Like sometimes it'll be all vegan except there's honey in there for some reason. It's just like, mm-hmm. why did y'all do that? Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing, I, I thought I found I found a bit of a cheat code because I started uh, eating like kosher food for like sweet snacks. They have some good like vegan friendly snacks because like kosher, they don't mix like different animal products together when they make stuff. And so like, I'm like, oh, they got this dairy free chocolate. Da, da, da. You know what I mean? They got this hazelnut cream, whatever. But then some of the stuff will have eggs in it or they'll have fish gelatin as opposed to cow gelatin. And so it's just like, just because you think you might find a pocket where you're like, ooh, I found a workaround or I found another area where I can like dabble in the food, you still have to like pay attention. Like you can't take it for granted that yeah. just because one thing in the brand or three things in the brand are vegan, mm-hmm. that everything is vegan. Oh, we got some we got some good comments over here. So um Alnisa Berry says, I had to tell my family that I don't eat anything that had a mama or came from a mama. Surprisingly, this worked to get them to understand what vegan means. Wow. Yeah, that mm. sounds similar to what um, Dick Gregory used to say. I don't even think I can say what Dick Gregory used to say. But it has something to do with I don't eat nothing that poo poo pee pee or had a mama or something like that. I don't remember, but it was something like really funny because, of course, he was a comedian as well. Um, Karen M. Evans says, if it walked, hop, swam, crawled, slithered, had eyes, a mama and a dad, don't eat it. Terry, <laughs> Dr. Terry Mason. Do, do y'all know Dr. Terry Mason? Yeah. I don't know Dr. Terry Mason, but I will be knowing Dr. Terry Mason soon because um, I will be looking looking you up, Dr. Terry Mason. Um yeah, Karen, that's why I read the ingredients list because it gives the recipe basically. Basically, yeah. you get the recipe right there just by Absolutely. looking. And and just in case anybody didn't know, the first ingredient is always like it goes from um, from most to least. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it like if, it, if the first ingredient is wheat, then it, there's the most wheat. And then the next ingredient has the next most and all the way down to the least of mm-hmm. that ingredient in the product. So that's just one little cheat code as well. Um, and then Wima Yvonne de Brady says they are doing all sorts of things like pizza with soy meat and ri- yes, yes, I have seen it yeah. and real cheese. Like I try to say dairy cheese because you know saying real cheese makes it seem like it's like and the, and you know these industries do that right mm-hmm. now. They're like you know we make real cheese, not that fake chemical stuff, you know, mm-hmm. like that kind of thing. But yeah, they do. They do that. I've seen, yeah. I've been tricked actually before mm-hmm. when they say like, you know, made with soy meat and it's just like, oh, shucks, what is this? Yeah. And then you gotta like really be careful because it'll have mm-hmm. dairy cheese, you know, sprinkled on it. It's very strange. But I think that what's happening is that these um, these, uh, what you call it, plant-based meat companies are getting um, deals with companies Mm -hmm. and they look they like look you want you know buy our crumbles you want to buy our whatever you know take it Mm -hmm. and you know these companies are just taking it and doing whatever they want to do with it absolutely and so yeah that's definitely something to look out for i've seen i had that scenario i thought i oh sorry ray um I, I thought I found vegan chicken pot pie because it had beyond meat in the chicken. But then yeah. you look and the crust has egg or or yeah. dairy or something in the crust. So mm-hmm. it's not vegan. It's just like y'all put that so big on there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And even Marie Callender's, people talk about Marie Callender's pies being yeah. um vegan friendly, but at the holidays I was looking and they had ones they were advertising made with real butter. And I'm like, Where's the ones with the fake butter? You know what I mean? Like, I, don't <laughs> <want that. laughs> I don't want that. Um, and so they were there, but they were putting the ones made with real butter at the end caps. So you had to dig mm-hmm. to find the vegan friendly Marie Callender's pie. So Yeah. They do it to grab attention and it makes you excited. And then I mean, I've flung a mini like product like back in like the like, the grocery freezer. Then I had to be like, oh, especially if like there's a person that works at the grocery market standing right there like I'm mean, nice sorry I'm sorry <laughs> just be mad <laughs> because you get excited but you know this is all it's all it's all marketing you know they do rebrands of the same one change the colors and things like that you know if you have like a favorite brand and then you're like oh it's new like no they change the colors same things with the products because you know it's, uh so many people are trying to eat healthier 
Uh, it's being marketed so much as a trend too. So people are like, oh, let me try this. And they throw that on there and you turn the box around and you look at the ingredients and you're just like, why, man, why? But it got your attention and that's what they wanted it to do. Well, actually, no, you got your attention to the front. But, you know, again, you got to get wise and look at the ingredients. But a lot of people, you know, sometimes we get caught up and so excited and we trust them thinking like, oh, OK, you know, you're looking out for us because you say, hey, soy this and, you know, plant based this and you grab it and just throw it in your cart. But, uh, yeah, they get your money. That's what they want to do. Yeah. Oh, another. Yeah. Hand, this is Bernadette. Another hand is to look for cholesterol only in animal derived food stuff. So that's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this, is, this is a great indicator, but it's not always perfect because I was being lazy one day when I was like, I'm just going to read how much cholesterol there is. And it was zero grams of cholesterol. But then I got home and I read the ingredients and there was an animal product in there. I guess it must have been minimal enough that based off of the Ooh. serving size of the package. But it, it was kind of like, if you're like, if you need to break it down into sections, like, let me look for cholesterol first, then let me look at the bold section. You know what I mean? If you need to, like, find a strategy for looking at the ingredients labels to figure out what's what, um, that is a great indicator. But I did get tricked in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, just thinking about all these challenges, I, honestly, it can get discouraging to go to non-vegan restaurants or to trust these products. I mean, I'm thankful to see this demo that you did, Jess, because then, you know, you can make your own beef crumble and, um, or just choosing to go to restaurants because it's just like, it. sometimes it's just like, I just want to go somewhere where I feel safe, you know, and I don't have to ask all the questions. And because even when you ask questions, you're still, you know, because I've asked all the questions and they still got it wrong. You know, I went to an Ethiopian restaurant and I got the um, some busas and it was just the fact that somebody had ordered beef ones and I ordered the lentil ones and they just picked the wrong ones when they were coming to my table. And oh. so, yeah, so it was just like, you know, like you do the best you can and then it can still backfire. It makes it feel discouraging where you're like, oh, I just want to eat somewhere that's just a hundred percent vegan. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, those issues. But, you know, for those that, if that's just not an option, just stay encouraged and make sure you're asking all the questions. But, um, but you know, these are opportunities to, to support vegan restaurants and um and even to experiment with new recipes like the one we saw tonight to make your own products because then you know for sure what is in them and luckily on our website at afroveganSociety.org, we have tons of recipes that you can try if you're looking to find meat or dairy replacements um just real quick um so rochelle parker says where are the other four ladies who did cooking demos for afro vegan will they be presenting this month um you know i don't really know who the other ladies are um i think at least one of the other ladies is uh doing um like the moderating and stuff like that because there's a lot of that goes on behind the scenes um with running um a live stream and so um, so I, I know that she has other work to do. And I think that, are these the only, these are the two, um, D Danny and Jess Carter, these are the two cooking demos, right? Mm -hmm. For February. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, that, that's it. These are the two, but keep in mind that those cooking demos are still available on our YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. don't fret, never worry. We make all of our um, content available for free somewhere. So it's going to be on the YouTube channel. It might be um, on the website. It's probably both places mm -hmm. or, you know, somewhere else completely um, like social media or something. But we have, you know, so, so, so many cooking demos. So Absolutely. just buckle up and head over <laughs> to that YouTube channel and, and have a great time over there. Absolutely. Even have a pen and paper if you're trying to uh, work out a grocery list. You know, you might get lost and like, hmm, what do I want to eat this week? And just go to either our February resource library or you click on the recipes um, tab of our website. And we have a, it's like a whole page dedicated to like all cooking demos. So if you're trying to figure out what you want to cook for the week, grab a pen and paper and get excited. Or, you know, just uh, have one bookmark and when you're in a grocery store, just checking it out. Like, okay, I'm gonna get this, 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 and this. 
yes. and cook with us. And don't and again, like we we encourage you when you make certain dishes that you found from like any of our websites or anything, and if you happen to post it just because you want to show the people around you that you know how to cook and you make good stuff, you know, tag us. We'd love to see like you taking advantage of all the resources, free resources that we provide for you. Yes. We also yeah. love feedback from our community. So like if ever you have requests or questions, just like y'all are sharing your questions and stuff in the comments today, like you can email us. You can always put your requests into the chats or anything like that to let us know, like, what do you want to see from us? Because um, because, yeah, we, we want to be responsive to our community and give you what you need, whether that's tips, that's information, or that's more resources so that you can be equipped to not only, like, survive and be effective, but also, like, really enjoy living this lifestyle and kind of be an ambassador to your loved ones, your community, and your family. Mm -hmm. All right. I also... Well, I also wanted to remind everybody about our merch sale, and I wanted to actually show off my tote, if you don't mind. This is my tote here, and y'all, it's big enough where I have my laptop in here. I got uh, a journal. I got some books. I mean, it definitely holds a lot. And of course, you can take it to the grocery store with you and hold a few things. But definitely go ahead and grab you a tote. It's cute, too. Look at that. It's cute, right? <laughs> so um, check out our website. Like uh, Ray said earlier, it's right at the top. You can just click there and get into the merch sale this month. That's great. I love and our I, merch. Think, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Our logo is so nice, you know? Yes. It makes the impact. People ask me, like, what is that? Whenever they see me carrying it, like, oh, what is that? Every time. It's a great, you know, it's great. Um, and we do have some merch on our site that says Afro Vegans Unite. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we've got a variety of things. Just check out our site, y'all. We've got something for everybody on there. Oh, my gosh. Did I tell y'all that I was in Vermont? And I saw an Afro Vegan Society bumper sticker. Ooh. I was okay. like, okay, Vermont. Okay. Okay. <laughs> representing, representing. So, yes, we out here for sure. That's awesome. And thank you, Void, for repping our merch at the grocery store. Nice. Nice, nice. Love that. So, um, I think it's a great time to remind folks about are the film viewing we have this month too, Brenda, just because we've been at live for a while and new people have been joining. So we just want everyone to get the word about other opportunities we have this February. Yes, yes. So again, I got a plug. They're trying to kill us. The film is a powerful documentary that puts a lot of really important information out there. Um, you know, it goes through telling the life of John Badass Vegan Lewis, you know, uh, being raised in Ferguson, Missouri, a lot of the stuff that he endured. And then, you know, it just hits on it. There's so many celebrities in it. You know what I mean? Like that every time I rewatch it, I'm like, dang, he's in there. Like Neo's in there, you know, but it, it's just really, you know, one of those powerful movies that, I mean, it should be in the theaters. When you watch the film, you'll see why it's not. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is so powerful and it is so important and it is available for free for the month of February at they're trying to kill us.com. Go and check it out. Um, somebody, I think last week was saying they bought some merch. I'm like word, you know, because these filmmakers work so hard to uh, produce this film um, only to get the kind of response that you would expect mm -hmm. from, you know, uh, you know, mainstream uh, production companies and stuff. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's just so important that we, especially watch the film, learn from the film, share the film with others, anybody. Listen, it's all month free. So tell people about it, coworkers, family members, friends. It's just a, a very important film. So we need to see it. Yes, enough respect to them. I think one of the things that we don't realize is uh, when we think of what's deemed as threats to society, we think of like um, 
social activists, political activists, or things like that. You know, they have their FBI files, but best believe they're checking for people that are trying to do great projects like they're trying to kill us uh, because it's educating the people and it's trying to get us to be healthier. And what do you do when you're healthier? You live longer. Uh, so, you know, that's a, that's a lot of things that can be deemed as threats to society as well. So, you know, people that are doing this type of work are also taking this risk. So, you know, enough respect to them for putting this out for the people, for sure. If you haven't checked it out, please, please check it out, share it, watch it with your family. It's definitely an eye opener. Yes. And we've got people who are in the comments spreading the word too. Karen said she has the director of the org. She volunteers at to send it out to their email list. That's a great way. Awesome. To yeah, it's Black History Month. Like this is timely. You know, this is a limited opportunity to watch this film for free. So any connections you have, any ways you can get this um, film in front of eyes of people who really need to see it, um, you know, is important and, and worth doing. And, you know, um, Afro-Vegan Society's mission is to make vegan living accessible to the most marginalized communities, right? And so your support, your participation together helps us to grow and broaden our reach. And so we thank you so much if you've been tuning in today, if you've been enjoying the conversation, participating in the conversation, give this video a like, share it to somebody who you think might enjoy the discussion or might enjoy the cooking demo um, because, you know, we need to grow our audience because the more people who have the information, the more people will be equipped to make this meaningful change that can change their lives for the better in so, so, so many ways. I mean, Afro-vegan Afro -vegan society centers Afro-veganism, you know, and it touches so many aspects of our lives. And um, I, Brenda's equipped to talk more about that, but I just feel like we're talking about veganism and how to eat, but, but what you choose to eat and what you choose to consume has such a huge impact on your quality of life as an individual, but also as a community and as a society. And so we take the, this mission really seriously and um, we appreciate everyone's support so far. And like I said, give this a like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you continue to help us support the growth of this movement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. And you can find out information about Afroveganism in particular, um, because we do have um, a, a definition of what Afroveganism is very specifically. Um, Afrovegan society needed to exist. And that's something that I talk about in my presentations and my talks and the reason why. And there will be more videos coming out about very important social justice issues that are connected to plant-based eating. Um, and vegan living. So, you know, if you're not connected to us on all the social media platforms, make sure that you connect, you know, send a link to somebody because there's a whole series of informational videos that are going to come out about everything from, you know, uh, our racist food system and how it's rigged uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that people who have the least also have the least opportunity to be healthy and vibrate and vibrate. Okay. And be vibrant is what I meant to say. Um, and, you know, to environmental racism and the fact that, you know, certain kinds of factories and, you know, production plants specifically get put into um, communities of color, specifically Hispanic and black communities because of how much they pollute um, just, you know, everything, everything, everything we're gonna be talking about everything and so you know follow us on social media check out our website the blog section we're gonna be talking we're gonna get into it we've been getting into it we're gonna keep getting into it um mm -hmm. because one thing that we believe in is education and being informed and being able to make informed choices that is very very important absolutely Absolutely. So um, throughout this live, people have been commenting their favorite vegan food for a chance to win our prize tonight. So I'm just going to share the image of the prize again. And then I think we are just about ready to announce our winner. So just to remind everyone, we've had four weeks of amazing prizes. We're on week three. This week we are giving away an air fryer so that you can make your own beefless crumbles and so, so, so much more. Mm -hmm. um, wait, let me take it down. Okay. And it looks like today's winner is going to be Dietrich Rush. So, yeah. 
We always see you in the comments. And um, yeah, we are so happy that you have joined us tonight. In order to claim your prize, please email afrovegansociety at gmail.com in the subject put February week three prize winner. And then in the body, put your mailing contact information so that we can contact you. We'll let you know that we got your mailing info and then we'll be sending out our prizes at the conclusion of February at the end of the month. But yes, thank you for participating. Thank you for everyone for participating. We have another yeah. amazing prize coming next week. We have so many more opportunities to win prizes in our Facebook group, on social media. So you just need to stay engaged with everything that's going on so that you could win your own very own ABS tote bag, cookbooks, so much more. So lock in with us, plug in all over the place. And um, yeah, you have a chance to get connected with ABS and win some prizes for participating in this very special celebration of Black vegan history and culture. Yes, wait, can, so can you zoom in on me for one second? Absolutely. I want to share something. Y'all don't even know I'm doing this, but we have a special, very limited edition set of coasters, Afro Vegan Society wow. coasters. They are wooden. They are um, a wood burning kind of kind of vibe. Um, and usually we um, will like send these out to like you know certain kinds of supporters, donors, things like that. I do want to give away one set to somebody who is like following us and, you know, supporting us throughout this veggie-ary, um, you know, experience. And so I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not even going to tell anybody when we give it. It's random. As a matter of fact, all of these giveaways are random. I know like all our favorite people are like <laughs> winning. Look, these are randomly selected, I promise. But, um, but so this is going to be another randomly selected gift. Very, very limited edition. Um, and I mean, like the artist who made them doesn't even do wood burning anymore. So like when I say limited, I mean, uh -huh. limited, limited. So this is special. It's a big deal. We want to show people how much we appreciate you. So yeah, like that's coming. That's going to be out there. So stay tuned for that. Those are gorgeous. They are. I'm so proud of them. Yes, so it's the 16th day of February, so February is more than halfway over, but that does not mean we are winding down yet. We are still ramping up with so much more to come. We've got lives coming on Instagram. We've got opportunities to watch They're Trying to Kill Us. We've got prizes. We've got the 29-day challenge going on in the Facebook group. Uh, we've got new YouTube videos coming. We actually released a YouTube video, um, I believe it's Day before Wednesday for a hearty vegan chili. So check out that recipe. We have the series on our YouTube channel called Tasty for $10, where we show you how to make delicious vegan recipes for $10 or less. So the resources, the food, the fun, the connection is going to just keep on rolling. Um, but I feel like we're getting to that point where we can start to wind it down. So does anyone have any final thoughts they want to share before we wrap up this week's live stream? I do. Um, and it's, this is very important. I, I just needed to um, to clear this up before we do close out. Um, Jess, do you have like leftovers from the chop? I mean, what did you plan on doing with the with the leftovers? Because I will like drop to people's house. Ask Danny. I will drop to people's house for food. Um, so I would. Like, I mean, I don't waste food and I don't mind leftovers. So I am not going to waste them. But if you want to come get some, you can yeah. come through and get them. Yeah, that sounds great. I appreciate that. All right. All right. So at this point, <laughs> now that we got that out the way, did anybody else have anything that you want to close out the session with? Yeah, speaking of uh, Jess's food, uh, again, as she mentioned, she has the Tasty for 10 series. And um, an email was sent out to everyone with the hearty chili that she created. So um, if you haven't yet, check it out. It's on our blog. You can check it out through emails, but it looks like a delicious recipe. As a matter of fact, when I was looking at the video and she was spooning it into her bowl, I told her, I was like, I was actually like sniffing, <laughs> like, <laughs> like trying to catch a whiff of like, oh my God, that looks so good. And it was actually the ingredients. I'm not going to give it away, but some of the ingredients she used, I was really surprised about. Like, I never thought of it. I never thought of it. So these are the type of like, genius creations that we have available so make sure you check it out and stay tuned for the tasty for 10 series uh as it sounds it's ten dollars you know just trying to get you to eat healthy but you can do it affordably you know that's one of the things we focus on so definitely stay tuned for that new series as well yes 
Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. This was wonderful. Thank you all right. so much for attending. Um, and it is um, going to be available on YouTube immediately, right, Jess? Yep. Yeah. So even if you came in a little late, uh, Vegan Warrior says, oh, okay. Mm, sexy Vegan <laughs> Sisters. Sorry, ladies, I'm late. Um, well, thank you very yep. much. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so, you know, it's available. It is available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So yes. tell a friend. Thank y'all for spending y'all Friday with us. We appreciate y'all so much. Yes. yes. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.